Transformers YouTube was honestly something special in the early 2000s because that's when third party blasted onto the scene. Hell, there was no Fans Toys or New Age or Iron Factory or X-Trans Bots and the mega saturation that the market has today. But that was because Masterpiece wasn't the way we know it now. It was kind of all over the place at that time. Back then, you were looking for fill-ins and add-ons for the Classics and Universe line. And this is where the YouTube aspect comes back in. If you were around back then, you were probably watching P. All, Sean Long, JT Mitchell 87, and Vangelis talk about the grandpappy company of them all, Fans Project. And there really is nothing more iconic from their early third-party videos as the City Commander armor for Classics Ultra Magnus. This thing was the shit back then. See, back then, Ultra Magnus had been reduced to getting a white Optimus repaint all the time, and Fans Project was like, you know what, Hasbro? You know what? We ain't taking this shit sitting down. So they hit the drawing board and made a semi-trailer to hook up to this cock tease of a hitch on your Classics Ultra Magnus's cab mode, and that trailer could also turn into full-fledged Magnus armor for your base robot. And it was awesome. And after the armor was on, it fit like a glove into your Classics and Universe shelf, and it was the shit. This was so hot, it would sell out all the freaking time. Then they got the idea of, hey, don't we have two other variants of this mold? So they repainted the set two more times, and it still sold awesomely. We are the shit! One of those being a TFCon exclusive meant to go with Classics Optimus Prime. It would later get a slight repaint, making it a fourth release in the Asian market, which is the version we'll be talking about here today, which means we are once again heading back into third party territory. This is the zenith of all old school third party offerings. For you youngins that weren't there, this is the Sultan of Swat, the King of Crash, the Colossus of Clout, the Colossus of Clout, of Transformers add ons. So let's just have a look and see why. First off, I want to talk about the Classics Prime, which is good on its own. I've looked at it before in the Tree Bottom Bridge series, but I want to go over it just briefly because everybody knows this is a pretty decent truck mode, which is a good modern representation of G1 Prime. It's a modern Peterbilt flat nose. There's 365 days in a year. The earth is round. There's no such thing as Ohio. You get it by now. It's stuff that all the better YouTubers I've already listed have said already. But nevertheless, this is one of the best Voyagers of the past 20 years. Speaking of time passing and years gone by, you might notice that some of the paint apps have been scratched all the hell online. I didn't know this figure firsthand. This is actually a used copy, but I still love them all the more for it. We don't have that many features going on in this mode because, well, it's a classic toy. They don't have features in the vehicle mode. So I'm just gonna roll them across the table and get on with my life. But this toy not having gimmicks is what left things open-ended for Fans Project to roll this baby in. And there's the full look. And honestly, seeing this trailer clip on is such a nostalgic feeling for me. Even doing it, I can almost hear the spectral voice of P on when I clip it on. This is the video Whoa, review Jesus. for the and this is great. I love how well this matches up with the truck. One thing you might notice though is that it doesn't quite match the striping. That's because this paint scheme was designed around the Henke Prime. Remember when I said Asian market earlier? But yeah, the Classics version was a TFCon exclusive. Normally I'd be like, oh, what sellouts? But it's a repaint of a set that was already widely available, so no harm done there. But anyway, I really love how solid this truck mode looks and how great it goes with the cab. And despite the striping not quite matching, the red and blues match up almost perfectly. The same could be said about the wheels too. Even though they're not quite the same shape, but neither are normal trailer wheels, so that's just fine. You might also notice that there are some stickers that were applied by me that add some Diaclone style detail. You know, this kind of stuff right here. Wait, do I even really have to explain this to you? I mean, this, this shit's more iconic than Optimus Prime's mouth plate. There's also this sticker on the back that's supposed to be a license plate. And if you get the TFCon exclusive, you get a few more options for it. The TFCon exclusive version also has a sticker for the side that literally says TFCon Toronto, just in case if you didn't see it on the packaging, as if to say, Hey, asshole, I'm an exclusive. Buy me, buy me. Yeah, I'm good. I think the subtlety goes just fine with this. You also get a bunch of plugs to plug up the ugly screw holes, which I went ahead and did because, you know, you're viewing pleasure. Because I know how some of you third-party people are out there and react to them screws. Help! 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 So what can this thing actually do? I mean, can it haul cars? No. Well, I'm, I guess you can put one on top, so 
Yes. But what you can actually do is open this back hatch up and this is where the missile launchers are hiding. Which, get this, was a separate product from the first release. That's absolutely foul. And now you plug them into the side of the trailer and now you have an accurate looking Ultra Magnus trailer. I love this. It also has a bit of a Power Master Prime look to it, which I'm always here for that. But the thing is, the missiles don't launch. Yeah, it's a little sad that they don't launch, but with my streak of losing accessories at this point, it's probably a good thing. But don't worry, the missiles still come out of the launcher for some reason. Don't ask me why that happens. And get this, G1 Magnus's launchers will fire them. Well, I, I don't even know, guys. I, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's all we can do besides it rolling pretty good. Would be nice if they figured out how to get it to turn, though. It literally does not turn at all. But yeah, I'm a pretty big fan of the truck and trailer. Let's transform it. Once again, I'm not going to say much about the transformation. Everyone's said it by now. I mean, that toy guy just made a video on it more recently. I, I have nothing to say negative about the transformation, and I have l just nothing to comment about. It's so Optimus Prime. It's literally a toy that's been talked about a million times on YouTube. So just, I guess here's the transformation. In robot mode, I think this is the perfect modern representation of a G1 Optimus Prime. I really wish they hadn't got away from this design philosophy. I mean, it kind of went away with Aaron Archer, but I just wish they had stuck with this a little bit longer. And everything about this guy is just iconic from his wind vane on his back to the yellow, that's a little bit scratched off on mine, but yellow nonetheless, and those door wings on his arms. I mean, that is just a iconic piece of design on this figure. One thing I will say about this toy is it started the trend of having shit fake grills on them instead of using the real grills. I mean, I get it, this grill is gigantic, but come on. However, with how small it is, I could justify it as the radiator, so maybe it's not a fake grill after all. Feature-wise, he has two guns that are formed from parts of the truck which i'm not crazy about the first is the ion blaster which is kind of a machine gun type and it's formed from the smokestacks and i'm kind of here for it i love how this thing looks and the other one is this bfg formed from the wind vane which cool but why is it so red it's a little bit too red for my taste and naturally, he dual wields them like a pro. So now I think it's as good as time as ever to bring in the trailer. I would explain this transformation, but I don't think anyone who watches my channel wants me to explain how to clip on a 15-year-old upgrade kit for an 18-year-old figure. So... This is the royalty that is the Powered Commander armor from Fans Project. And honestly, I'm at a loss for words as to what to say that hasn't already been said. I love this thing, and it was one of my grails for a long time. It really beefs up the base robot, but brings certain parts of it out of proportion, unfortunately. But that's hardly a deal breaker. Look at the head. It's not Optimus, of course, but it's definitely Ultra Magnus with a somewhat stoic expression. However, it does look a bit younger. Now, believe it or not, you don't always have to have this face. The head is removable and you can take the face out and swap it with faces that came out later with the other releases. The other Shadow Commander release, which is the Nemesis Prime repaint, has a face mask that would work perfectly with this Optimus Prime variant. You also notice the catering towards the Henke version once again with the chrome on the legs and the chest. 
That would also go with the Age of Extinction 2-pack version of this toy, which I do have, and would usually wear the armor, but for this review, I didn't use it because, well, one of the door thingies are broken. Translucent plastic strikes again. So what else can this thing do besides stand there and look cool? Well, he can hold Prime's guns quite well, actually, and they look pretty good in his hands. Or he could store them on the shoulder pylons with specifically made holes for each one of them. On the right side, you've got one for the ion blaster, which is a square. And then the other side has one for the BFG, but on this release, it doesn't fit for some reason. Damn it. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but for some reason, this hole is just a bit too wide. Kind of like your mom. <laughs> you might also recall that at some point in the transformation that I pulled this big chunk and it's just been sitting there. Well, when you flip it upside down and put it together, it becomes a big ass rocket launcher for him to hold. And I can already hear people saying, Treebot, you've got it facing the wrong way. You're wrong. The correct way is you either fold it up and fire the missile like this or fold it down and use the rifle. And I know this because one, the animation says so, and two, look, look at the look at the freaking groove. Look, look at the groove on the arm. That is obviously supposed to go that way. Now I'm gonna finish up with articulation because it's just about the same as Prime, just with a little bit extra. So the head is on a ball peg uh, Primes is just on a hinge, uh, the base robot anyway, uh, so that's nice. You get some really good movement out of this. Uh, the shoulders go all this far up and this far back. Well, actually, they go farther forward than they do back, mainly because the pylon runs into the uh, uh, wheels on the back there. Uh, the elbows can go to about here um, without the gauntlet. It can go to here, so it does limit it a little bit, uh, but oh well. I mean, that's really not that big of a deal because uh, I mean if you're gonna shoot anything you're gonna have it forward you know it's not gonna be like that you know like a G1 toy it's not gonna do that uh, the legs get hindered a little bit by the cod piece uh, it goes forward it can go back the same amount as it used to and then the knees are exactly the same and he gets a bit of an ankle tilt so that's actually really nice and I neglected to mention his bicep swivel still works and he's got a wrist swivel now, so that's really cool. Overall, he's a little bit limited, but just because of how much he's got going on, he's he kind of bangs into himself, but that's all right. It's still a pretty well-articulated figure. Overall, this set is a great piece of third-party history. It would not be where it was today if it wasn't for this set. I know DNA wouldn't be shit without Fans Project setting the bar so unbelievably high with this set and several that came after it. I love having this thing in my collection, and while it has aged, it still holds a very special place in my heart considering the fact that it was one of the first things I saw on Transformers YouTube at the tender age of just six years old. Now, if only I could track down that Takara Legends Magna Convoy to put in the middle of this thing for the complete look. Yeah, never mind. That ain't happening. With that being said, keep growing your collections. Treebot out.